Beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, it's a beautiful object and it has a very nice sound. So, uh, a lot of things going on and uh, I have a lot of people asking me about my diet, so it's, uh, I speak about that, I post about what I'm eating, it's always very, very simple, mostly steam, I use, uh, as you know, the Vitalizer, uh, I use it since 1987. Uh, and uh, it makes my life very, very easy and um, there is nothing special. Um, people ask me to do a, a recipe book, but you know, I don't, in fact, I don't cook really. I just put things like that together and uh, you can see the element. Um, it's difficult for me to do that. <laughs> Some people say, oh, for you it's evident, but not for everybody. Yeah, but for me, it's not evident to do a cookbook, you know? So if you go on my highlight about food, you can see, uh, you can see what I'm eating mostly. I'm eating mostly, um, I'm eating everything, but mostly vegetables, fruits, nuts, olives, a little bit of raw cheese from the farmer's market. I use, as uh, I always said, um, I use mostly non-processed food, only the food I process myself. So uh, fresh food, organic, but it's beyond the food. The thing is that it's a, it's a wall, I could say, out of living. It's not something new to me. It's something I, it's like basic to me. It's like, I can say normal, you know. It's something that comes from the way I've been uh, raised. And uh, for me, it seems so natural. And I could never go and buy something already made, frozen and put in microwave. It's out of my world. It's not part of my world at all. Because I've been used to to go even to the garden to harvest with my grandfather and to cook with my grandmother. Fresh food. So when you have this, I could say example, very young, you repeat what you the example you have what you know um, and this was not a bad one <laughs> there are others that maybe are not really great but this one was a good one because without doing any kind of effort in fact I, I always took care of myself with basics and simple things and the thing is that don't complicate yourself. Don't complicate your life. It's for that when I discovered in 1987 the Vitalizer, and I'm not paid <laughs> to, to promote the Vitalizer at all. Um, I just have points when someone buy and I can uh, offer Vitalizer to friends or, or family or someone who cannot afford one. I offer sometimes to some of my followers. So, you know, um, when you when you have a simple tool like that, you can do so many things. You can educate yourself. You can go online, and now you can have all the recipe you want. If I say, "Oh, I made this clafouti," you go and you check clafouti ingredient. It's always the same. There is nothing 
different. So, and you see how it's done and it's different for the temperature I always have to look for because me I'm used in Celsius, but I have to convert in Fahrenheit because my oven is Fahrenheit. So it's like, it's make me a little bit more complicated, but I succeed in it. I succeed in it. But the amazing thing is that I noticed that when I arrived in that country 23 years ago, is that even if I take similar ingredient, even if I do the same thing I'm used to do, and I'm used to cook since very, very, very long time. I started when I was a kid, you know, so it's not new to me. I don't get the same result than what I get when I am in France. And this, I think we have to take in consideration something more. It's because the energy of the place are different and produce grew, we are growing, even if they are organic, even if they are from little farmers, they are different because the land is different, because the water is different. And also, especially when it's polluted and all these, you know, terrible things that are in the, are in the air, in the water and all that. So it's a, it's a challenge because when I arrived in New York and uh, I started to cook, I was so disappointed because I was going to organic supermarket or to the farmer's market there and what I was cooking didn't have at all the same taste. So I was wondering, I'm, I'm used to cook, as I told you, since so long. It's not new for me. So I was wondering what is going on. So I thought a lot about that. And um, the basic thing, what I can tell you, go to simple things. Have gratitude to be able to access to that. And don't make things complicated. Don't put too many ingredients, too many things and too many processing things and you know in my fridge there are none of this sauce already made that you have here in supermarket I'm like wow what is this sometimes you open the fridge of someone and you have all this sauce and they last for years in the fridge I, I can't I don't have one and I have only the one I'm making myself the only thing I have is mustard you know so it's that it's it's uh, simplify your life it's already so complicated with what we are going through um, and it's going to become i told you that beginning of 2020 that it will be harder and harder and narrower and narrower and more difficult and more difficult until beginning of 2026 so we have to brace ourselves, we have to take care of ourselves, we have to go to simplification, simplification. And maybe also me, I see, even, even me, I, am, I was already simplifying a lot of things, but I'm even more now. Often I do only one meal a day. I am not, I don't need, and I think it's because of the energies cosmic energy, electromagnetism, everything that is changing because it's a big, big, big change that we cannot even have a glimpse of the amplitude of what is going on. So these changes affect each of us. Each of us in our lives, we have big changes, change of house, change of partnership, change of business, changes, and change also in food. And I was, uh, I was seeing a podcast recently saying that because some aspects in astrology are that way, they show us that in that field of, of um, food, of being nourished, there is a big difference where now a lot of people uh, are not hungry. It's because also we are more and more connected to the spiritual realm, especially with all the uh, difficult <laughs> situation that we are going through since more than three years now. So this obliges us to really 
go at a higher level, working more with our mind to understand what is going on to connect the dot and when we are busy there it's like a passion somewhere when you are passionate about something you you don't have the same need of eating because the passion you have or the, or the, the creative business you you are in in your daily life is feeding you at another level i posted in my um in my uh, live, uh, in my stories, a uh, very interesting video about epigenetics. I encourage you to watch this video that is quite long, but this explains what I'm speaking to you about since many years, the mindset and how we use our mind to create our reality. But this explains, and I said, yeah, when you, when you think that way, uh, the message you send to yourselves is something that is without resistance, without fear, so everything is flowing. But this video is going to explain deeper how this alchemy, how this chemical process happens in the body, in between the cells. So it's what is going on is that there is a big change at the cosmic level, there is a big change in the electromagnetic field of the planet, of the sun. So it changed also for us. And uh, I was speaking with friends and they say, oh, I, I have no appetite, I don't want to eat. It's normal, don't be scared about that. But select even better the food you are eating. Go even toward more excellency because we need less food in these times. And, uh, and it's, it's quite great. <laughs> so I wanted to, to tell you, I will not give recipe. I eat everything in moderation. Sometimes I was with my friend in Malibu some days ago and we had pizza at lunch and pizza evening. And what? Where is the problem? We really enjoyed it. They are very good. They are organic. And, and I was feeling very well. I had absolutely no problem. But it's not my daily routine. I don't have a routine. You know, it's like I feel yesterday morning I wake up, I was feeling to eat an artichoke. So I eat an artichoke, you know, and it was already 11 in the morning. And today I was doing my mail and everything. And I had my lunch at past noon. So and it was my breakfast. So, you know, it's um, make make things simple. Um, educate yourself online. And when I, I post something, it's maybe for you to search. It's maybe when I post also stories that I repost that people are sending to me, it's not because I totally uh, believe or follow what is there. It's more because, oh, this is interesting. It's intriguing. And like this, as I do, I go and I check. You can go and check as well. It's to invite you to do some search. It's to invite you to, to, like this, to feel what sounds right or not to you. It's not because I post this that is, this is right, or this is what I think, or this is how I see things. Often I put a little comment, but sometimes I'm like, wow, what is that? And some people uh, send me messages and say, oh, look, I have this video connected to that. And like this, you have more and more you know, connections and, and details about what, what is going on. And it's the beauty of, of uh, you know, the internet, of what the tool that we created at the unconscious level, we created this tool to be able to have these exchanges. Oh, I see that someone is trying to contact me. There is Aura. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Let's see if Aura is here. It's her also was telling me that um, it was quite um, difficult. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Aura, how are you? Hi, Yasmina. Hello there. <laughs> how are things? How was the storm? You know, it was a lot of rain. It was a lot of rain for sure. A lot of downpour. 
and uh, we had a bit of a earthquake that came from Ojai. Yeah. yeah. So there was a jolt. But, you know, the whole idea of, sorry, I'm going to fix this because it's sort of, I did this very spontaneously. Uh, it, you know, when we hear the word hurricane, I think everybody was anticipating something much more dramatic than yeah. what was. And we were getting all these um, alarms on our phones and all these warnings all night. And it really wasn't as serious as they made it out to be. I think I think it was more tropical storm. Yeah, it felt very tropical. It yeah. did. It felt, it felt like a tropical storm. And I know that you're in the desert and I'm here in Los Angeles. So there was, there was a very tropical feeling. There were tropical winds. I saw the way it started. My trees started to sway outside in a way that you see in tropical storms. And the birds were trying to find refuge yes. before the actual downpour. But, you know, it was just a lot of water, a lot of rain coming down. And the next day the sun was out and it was business as usual. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and this is, um, it was surprising here because we are used to when there is rain here where I live, there is a lot of wind. So me hearing hurricane, I thought, it's going to be even more wind. So how is this going to be? Because here it's often mm -hmm. very much a lot of wind, really strong. And uh, there, as you can see the trees, they are, you know, like ramping on the ground because of the wind. So I was wondering how this is going to be. Is it an hurricane? Is going to be the roof going to go away? You know what I mean? Right. And yes. what, was really, what was really interesting is that here it's clear and even if there are clouds you see the mountain you have there is a wind and you know this was like amazing it was like in malibu in june gloom june where you have all gloom you don't see the horizon of the ocean you don't see anything because it's in the gloom and it was like that here but it's never like that here <laughs> i was like no one piece no one breeze nothing flat no wind at all gloom like a big pillow that was on the landscape you know of gray clouds like more fog very thick and it started with drizzle and it's never hand and it became after very 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 strong but it was not what i was expecting of a hurricane at all <laughs> No, they really made it out to be something. Look, it's very unusual for us to, we've never had a, I think we haven't had a hurricane here in California in 80 something years, you know, before we were even here. So to think of hurricane in the desert and in S Southern California is so strange, you know, and also August is the hottest month of the summer. Yeah. It's, it's, Weird. So we know that there's a lot of changes going on with the weather that doesn't seem normal. You and I have talked about it many times that the weather patterns are very strange and we know about the weather, how it's being altered and uh, the geoengineering that you and I have talked about many times. Yeah. Uh, and it's not new. It's not new. Huh? They started uh, decades ago. It's something that is, you know, but but sure, it's never said in the mainstream media, they never say, oh, they do that or that, but no. we know it exists. And, uh, and for me, there is something that is not right to, to play with the element. Elements are entities. And yeah. we know this very well, and shamans knows very well, because they can call for the elements for help or they and playing like that in a chemical way or or you know uh, with sounds or ultrasounds and all that with the element it's not good at all no and then apparently this has been going on for a long time i just saw something recently with the uh physicist i think his first name is michio uh and I can't think of his whole name. I want to see Michio. I don't know if it's Kuko. 
maybe I'm saying the name incorrect, but he's, he's a uh, physicist. Apparently, you know, playing with the weather or geoengineering has been going on for a very, very long time. Obviously, a lot sooner than you and I were aware of. Do you know, this has been going on for a, a tremendous amount of time, many, many years. So we don't know. It just seems more visible to the eye today that we can see things in the air that are identifiable. And we, you know, I don't remember seeing that when I was growing up. But maybe it was going on then. I just didn't look and see it. I know smog here in Los Angeles, California, we would have smog alerts. We would have very high smog alerts and you'd have to stay in your house or sometimes you wouldn't even go to school. And suddenly that's disappeared and now we're dealing with something completely different. Yeah. I think, you know, um, to play with that in that way, no wonder why everything is going wrong more and more. But it's like, if, if we take a bird view about that, it's like also the condition uh, to shake, to shake the planet and to shake people as well. To, hey, wake up, you know, like, mm -hmm. because, because I cannot detach the unconscious collective to what is going on in, in the, I could say, our reality on the planet, what we see, what is we are witnessing. Mm -hmm. Everything is orchestrated perfectly together. And when we understand this, when we see this like that, it doesn't make the thing not happening for sure. <laughs> they happen and we are like witness about that or, you know, touched by that. But what I have from um, a lot of my followers and um, about Maui, mm -hmm. a lot of my followers send me messages and tell me, and me too, I'm, I'm really, I, I don't know why I'm, I've been really moved by what happened there. Very much so, yes. Tragic. It's just yes. tragic. And a lot of my followers are, are telling me the same. And, and uh, it's like our souls, you know, and the soul of the people who disappear there like gave their life for us to be more moved and to be broken in our heart to be able to express more benevolence more you know gratitude more and and also to desire to have all the nonsense ending yeah. of all chemical synthetic war and war and war again and be, and building armament and selling armament and and sending up men to war enough of that you know it's it's really all about this as to stop and uh, and i think all these events that are breaking our hearts even if we are not close even if we have no friends there no family there it's touching you it's touching me it's touching oh, yeah. all of us and, mm -hmm. and and yeah. this is for us to, to really uh, express a strong desire and be really firm on what we don't want anymore. Individually, now they're going to bring back with this variant and all this nonsense, the BS variant, you know? People, no, yes, you, no, have, I, you have to don't comply. People as well don't comply. Yes, you know, we, if people comply to this, oh. then they're going to help. You know, here's the thing. People can do whatever they want. I don't want to tell anybody what to do or what not to do. I'm over explaining the way I perceive the world with those that see it very differently than me. However, if people are that stupid to accept another mass covering mandate and turn our lives into a living hell again. If those people are going to be so quick to do that again, I, I have to tell you, they will have nobody to blame but themselves when the results of that are that we are going to be like sheep who are following every time, what, the flu just disappeared? 
cold just disappeared. I mean, we've lived with viruses, we've lived with colds, we've lived with flus since the beginning of time. And now they want to put us in lockdown again because there's a supposed variant. But I really want to say something about this. People really need to pay attention because if they say they have the solution for it, <laughs> if they have a shot, what, for a new variant? Then how did they create it so fast? Yes. Yes. Did yeah. they create it overnight? People have to ask questions, Yasmina. They have to wake up and ask questions. How can they have a vaccine for a new variant every time a new variant comes around? It makes no sense at all. People need to use their, they really need to use their heads yeah. and realize that they're yeah, being lied to. That. It's for that that it is like that. It's ob to oblige people to question themselves, to put questions to themselves, right. to, to re realize right. what is going on there. It's, and, and it's crazy. And, and the thing, what happened in 2020, it was like a test to see the level of compliance of the masses. That's right. We still see people, forget the new variant. I see people, and I know you do, we've talked about it. People are outside. They're on scooters. They're on bicycles. They're in their cars by themselves, and they're still wearing masks. It's crazy. I mean, this is just crazy behavior. And I know we're very split. We're very polarized between you know, people that see this and people that don't. I think we should just stop trying to convince people to see what we see and they can be sheep and they can do whatever is being told to them and they can get vaccined a hundred more times and let's see what happens. Because this is just crazy behavior. It's unbelievable that people can't think for themselves. Yeah. Uh, it's it's quite really interesting. I was speaking about uh, this video about epigenetics that I just posted in my story. It's very, very interesting because what is at work, more, we spoke about that a lot, and um, what is created of all these disasters that are not really, we could say, natural from the nature? They are. They they become because the elements are disturbed, but only non-human can create that. <laughs> and, and this is, I spoke about that some, some weeks ago. It's really amazing how organization can create all this, few can create all this, but it's because they know, in a way, the law of nature. They know, in a way, how to use uh, symbolism, how to use the transits of planets, the aspect that they are. And it's not by chance that things happen there and there and there at this date or that time. The 8th of August, we saw what happened there in Maui, and all these things. So they, they this is a Terrorism, this what this knowledge that is and has been for a long time hidden to the masses by religion, you know, by religious mm -hmm. people or by any kind of you know people in power. People in general, when when I, I speak about esotericism since very young, I've always been fascinated by that and I've been really digging in that when I was younger. I, people around me thought that I was crazy and I was in a sect. People don't realize that there is another side of things that is hidden, like there is another side of us that is invisible. Right. They, 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 they only like to see what is visible and they only want to see what is considered science. Okay, and that there are other types of things that are not always visible to the eye, and people don't trust it. They don't believe in it. But this you know? this shows um, the, the the difficulties because for a lot of people they have absolutely no consciousness that they they have an invisible dimension to their being. Can we? Can we know the mysteries of the universe? Do we know everything about the cosmos? 
Do we know everything about the universe? No, we yeah. don't. But we have an opportunity right now to learn more if we want to open up our eyes and yeah. we want to really use our intuition and our intelligence to lead us to know the sacred truths of the universe. Everybody has a right to know the truths of the universe. You don't have to be a physicist. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a scholar. This is here for everybody to be able to perceive life in a way that they see life. Nobody should tell you how to see life. Mm. Nobody should tell you how to perceive the truth. It is our sovereign right to see things as we perceive them. Can you imagine being told how to see the world and how to see the truths of the universe? Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. But it's very complicated because as a conditionment has been done since so long yeah. that yeah. it's imprinted in patterns and, and people cannot um, even imagine that they are much uh, important, much bigger than a physical body. I know. And, and I know. This, is, uh, this is a magic uh, to, to, to maybe help for people to understand. I think the best is to turn towards nature just look the miracle the miracle of a, a blooming of a flower how mm. this and and we are the same we bloom we 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 grow we age it's part of the process of blooming and and dying and and it's if we look at this miracle how how we, we realize that there is something, some forces that bring this beauty. You know, you know it's me, you're absolutely right. And I, I think, why are people not accepting or embracing of something that is so beautiful and it's called transformation? Yeah. We yeah. transform. We are in a constant state of transformation. We're transforming right now. The world is going through incredible changes it's a tr it's really a very heightened transformational time and you know if people really embrace it and see it for what it is they can really experience life on on higher states of consciousness you and i talked about that the other day it, remember it, it's uh, it's because life become magical that's right it's uh, this mystery when you are at all about this process of nature creating beauty and we are part of nature and we can create beauty right it's our own way and it's for that we are all different to be able to create different things differently not to copy each of us not to be the same but uh, how can we be at the image of nature how can we be creating beauty in this material world because it's material I had someone who kindly told me, oh, uh, your house is so beautiful. And where do you find these things? I go in thrift stores and they are cheap. Nobody wants them anymore. But me, I see, oh, I can do that. Or I can do that. I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's creative. You're in the creative process. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful to be in the flow of creativity. And, and you know, it's, it's beyond just making my space beautiful. It's contributing to stop producing. Mass producing. You're talking, you know, Yasmina, it's so true. We are constantly in a material mass produced reality. Mm -hmm. We have such an excess of everything. And I think your whole way of creating your, your beautiful space by by going into repurposing going into thrift shops and i love the way you always find things and it's so exciting because it's like finding a gem it's yeah, like exactly. finding, it's like finding that gem that hidden gem somewhere do you know and there's something about being able to repurpose it in our environment rather than constantly mass produce mm. and constantly buy new things and we're so excessive and we're so wasteful so much of the time there's so much excess on the planet yeah 
Uh, and you know, it's great. Yesterday, before yesterday, I did and I found, uh, oh no, it was uh, Saturday or oh, Saturday. One of our trip store here was 50% off all the store. Oh, wow. I can tell you what we found with Gaia. It was fantastic. And I found again, this little porcelain Japanese. I had a bowl that I found last time that I paid 90 cents or something like that. And now I found a plate, Japanese uh, porcelain, you know, and I paid 69 cents by two. And now I have a little set of two pieces oh. in porcelain and painting in Japan. And I wow. can have another beautiful moment when I, when I have my lunch or when I, have, when I eat. You know what I mean? And it doesn't cost a lot. Yes. I don't care to have a big setup of 12 plates the same. I'm not interested yes. in that. I prefer to have little things that doesn't seem to be like us in a way it's like us we are all different they are all different but when they are together it creates something really beautiful because they are different it's not monotone it's not boring because like you have all this table with all the same things and this is more live this is more representing who we are so yeah i encourage yes. people to do that be excited this excitement comes from little girls looking for shells for stones looking for fruits and vegetables in the garden looking for white berries looking for mushrooms it's exciting it's the same excitement it, it you know is yes Nina. i love that you know when i go to my place at the beach one of my favorite things to do is to go walk on the beach and find feathers yeah and find the rocks and the stones and i feel like i'm i'm finding gold yes do you know yes. i find these beautiful feathers and i take the seaweed and i just tie it around it gives me so much joy the way you're talking about going into the thrift shops it is so much joy you know the things that are really precious a feather you know something from nature you talked about yep. nature before look what we find from nature that is so beautiful a bird gives us a gift by dropping its feathers on the earth and then mm -hmm. we find them like they're they're gems for us they're gifts for us do you know yeah, so <laughs> it's great to find joy in that it really is yeah. i'm with you yasmina i am so with you on that i think that it's sometimes we we you know when i walk into a store and i see so much excess i just i tune mm -hmm. out it's just it's too excessive but to find that that little gem that is and by the way you're talking about these wonderful things that you found for what under a dollar you can't get anything for under a dollar anymore yeah. it's become obsolete yeah. yes <laughs> and and this is like it's I, I cannot i'm amazed about that because we don't have a lot of this in france that is more here because of the other consumerism here very much so and yeah there's an, uh, there is so much especially in our area of uh, this part of california because of all the movie set since 40s 30s 40s i found uh, many years ago when i was in malibu i was going in uh, oxnard or in uh, ventura and they had a lot of uh, things from movie sets, lamps and mm -hmm. computer, but from the 40s, the 50s, but really nice and, and cheap. And, uh, and this is something really special that we have here, like also all the depression era glasses. And yeah. this is not like that in France. We don't have the same thing in France. You don't you have flea markets in France? Yes, flea markets? yes, but it's it's not like here, like the thrift stores. Like there, it's Salvation Army. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not the same. No. It's not the same as here. Yeah, it's different. So this is uh, something that I encourage people to do because uh, it's giving a new life to treasure that has been. Been forgotten, yeah, and 
create something with something that nobody wants anymore and make it alive again and make it beautiful and happy. And I was thinking, I was thinking of you because I was watching a podcast in France about what is going on in the planet and how this affects the appetite. And you told me, I don't know what I have. I don't have appetite like I was. It's like, and this uh, person was saying that regarding a certain aspect that I forgot about Taurus, in Taurus, these create that. These create this thing that we are not really desiring to have food like we were used to. You know, oh, I've been eating lighter yeah. and it feels yeah. really good. Like this morning I had a papaya and I, I cut a papaya. I had two halves of a papaya with lime and it was so delicious. Yeah. And I later on in the afternoon, I had some nuts. And I just have found that I, I mean, I love food. I'm a big foodie and I love to get together with you because <laughs> when you go to the farmer's market and Yasmina makes the most amazing meals. I just want everybody to know out there that to, to eat with you, Yasmina, is but, a treat. Because but you, you see how, how it's simple. You saw it's very simple. Yes, I don't no, but you do, you, you just, you always create such beauty, in, not just in your space, but you create beauty in the kitchen. But I find that like recently, and I think it's part of the transformation that we're going through, I've been eating much more light, lighter, if you will. And I am, part of me is liking it. I'm just eating more, like, think about it. I could pick a papaya or grow a papaya. We could, you know, these are more nature foods. Mm. And maybe we are so returning to the land that we are turning into like almost like a homesteader type of thinking that what can I eat that's grown from the earth naturally? Mm. You know, you talked earlier about you, you open someone's refrigerator, they have so many things in there. Like it's so again, the word excess. So I think right now I'm very drawn to foods that if I were on an island, I could eat those foods. We could go into the ocean. We could get fish. Mm -hmm. We could get something from a tree. We can get fruit from a tree. And I see a lot of people that are resonating to this lately. I think it's part of the transformation yeah. that we're going through. Oh, I think this is because uh, it has been so much excess. Like the same, when I go rarely in supermarket, when I go in a supermarket, I just want one thing is to escape. <laughs> because I'm suffocating to see all the produce. All I these know. produce that are dead it, in it, packaging and, and dead. No no energy, no life, I no know. vital forces. Yeah. yeah. And I also feel, Yasmina, I've been looking around. I haven't been going out to a lot of places where there's a lot of people. But the la lately, I haven't been doing it that as much. But when I do and I see the consumption of people like eating so much food and they have so much food on their plates and it's like this insatiable hunger, do you know? And especially here in America, we have so much excess of like, you know, this sort of fast food mentality of like, you've got to have all this food on your plate, do you know? And it starts to brainwash people to think that they need that do you know and it starts to affect your health it affects your weight you have children that are overweight unnecessarily because they're just not eating healthy and they're eating excessively yeah and it's always make me smile people tell me oh can you speak about your diet like i say when i started there is nothing to say about my diet sure there is nothing to say but it's basic simple natural non-processed no microwave no frozen no just simple yesterday yeah. i had a blast with an avocado yesterday evening i was working on my computer very late i had you know some fruits in the evening i was not desiring to eat a lot i had a great breakfast uh, lunch yesterday and suddenly i was like thirsty about an avocado i was like oh, i had such a good time with this avocado <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of this shalala bread that I started to make for the first time. <laughs> Not bad at all. And it was like I had the most amazing meal, just an avocado with a slice of shalala bread. See, and 
how delicious is that? You know, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I mean, Yasmin. That's what I've been really desiring lately. Same thing, the papaya and avocado. Think about those foods. We can just grow those on trees yeah. and imagine. And can you imagine the, the force in, in that tree from the ground and, and the, the sun and the air, the force to, to grow this thing? I know, nature. I think, Yasmina, I, I don't know, intuitively, I can only speak for myself. I feel like we're, we're moving back to nature mm -hmm. where, where, you know, even how you started when you start talking, you use the word simplify, simple, mm -hmm. make things simple. It's true. And I don't, I don't say simple in a way that is um, less than I yeah. say simple as in refine, yeah. refine our, our consumption, refine our taking in a food, you know, refine the process. We don't need very much on, on all area, you know, in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. We really don't need as much as we think we do. And I'm sensing that people are wanting to return back to the earth. They want to return back to the land. They want more people are growing their own food than ever before. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you, you don't even need to have a big piece of land. You can grow, there's all these things today where you can grow, I think it's the hydroponic. Mm -hmm. There are these, these structures or mini greenhouses or little, you know, herbal planters. You don't yeah. need a lot of space to grow your own food. You yeah. really don't. Someone asked me if I had a small, uh, I cannot grow here in the desert. I would have to buy a small greenhouse, but as I'm going to live, I don't invest in that. Right. Because right. if you have a greenhouse, you have to have AC because it's burning when, when it's very right. hot. So I, I tried, I, I said, okay, I'm going to try to raise some potatoes just to see how it works. They sprout, they bear well. And it was so hot. It was in the shed because after you have the animals and outside it's very hot as well. So, and the hair is so dry. So, and, and they could not, I could not raise them. I'm not really good at that. I need a special place to be, yeah. able, but, you know. Well, the heat, I think the heat is more challenging. Yeah. But I think that, you know, you support as do I, we support our farmer's market. Oh, you know, we, and I think, it's really important to support our, our farmers right now, and especially with foods that are ending up at the markets. You know, now there's this thing, this Bill Gates thing called Appeal. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you know about this. It's a wax, yeah, I saw. Um, wax coating on produce to keep it alive longer than it should. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you can't wash it off. Yeah. So I think it's really, first of all, I just want to say, People should ask their markets if they're carrying produce that is covered in a peel. This is a horrible situation and we wanna keep it natural. And I, I think going to your farmer's market and knowing who your farmers are and that they're growing natural foods that are not you know, um, mass produced and they're not overly homogenized. You know, It's like milking from a cow, milking from a sheep, growing foods straight from a tree that has none of this artificial coating on it yeah. you know this this thing that another crazy thing that bill gates is creating that is so not good for people's health you know it's, and it's ridiculous and also i thought you know when i came here from malibu the farmer's market in malibu is great it's small but it's great you know and uh, i was like oh my goodness how is going to be in the desert what i going to find i going to be obliged to go in supermarket but i don't like to go even if we have a local produce organic in the supermarket here it's a tiny it's not a big 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 supermarket but uh, imagine how i was happy when i knew that it was a farmers market 12 minutes away 15 minutes away in joshua tree and it's great because they are really little, little farmers. They have very, very tiny production. So it's for that with my friend neighbor Gaia, we go very, very early to be sure to get eggs or because if we go one hour later, there is no more it's eggs. It's gone. You know? Yes. So it's, but it's great because we have this, it's very, um, it's tiny, even tinier than Malibu, but we have everything. 
But you can get everything you need, I'm sure. Like you said, you can get the eggs, and I'm sure you can get the cheese, and you can oh, get and the bread. Mushroom. There is this guy now that, is, has, that has so many varieties of mushrooms, and uh, he also organized tour in his farm. It's in Palm Desert or something like that. So we're going to go, and I'm curious to visit the farm, you know, to see growing the mushrooms. Isn't but they are delicious. It's, it's really... It's really amazing. And I, as far as I remember, I always looked for farmer's market when I was in Paris, suburb of Paris. I was going at the farmer's market in Corsica, I go at the farmer's market. And everywhere you can find, it's a little bit more difficult in countries very north when it's very cold in winter, for sure. They, they have difficulties to find produce. Even that, if you are in Iceland, you found produce because they have this thermal heat, you know, from the ground yeah, yeah. and the amazing food. I was there like three weeks for work once and a uh, long time ago, long, long time ago in the late eighties in winter. So three hours of daylight, you know, yeah. just, oh, and it's night right. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think supporting, I think supporting our farmers right now is really important yes. as Nina, because we're getting a lot of GMOs in our foods. We're getting a lot of, um, you know, uh, glyphosate. We're getting a lot of toxins and poisons in our food today. Yeah. And I think that to keep it as pure and natural as we can, we're going to get more of that by supporting our local farmers it's, it's, and buying produce it's, directly from them. It's very really difficult because even them, they are affected because of what it sprays in the sky. It goes. I know, I know, but there are still some farmers yes. that have organic farms and they don't have all of this, these toxins on their food. You know, there's other ways of using fertilizers and ways to protect your, your, you know, your growing and your agriculture in a way that isn't harmful to, to our health. And I'm very concerned about the markets today. I don't think that they're being honest, I think that there's a lot of GMOs in the foods. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're going to be uh, injecting the meat with mRNA. Yeah. You know, there's so much today. Then there's lab made food. It's we're, we're, we're moving so far away again from nature, mm -hmm. which is why I think we want to stay connected to nature, mm -hmm. connected to our farmers, connected to natural produce, yeah. you know, People are really waking up to this, Yasmina, because like I said, with Bill Gates's introducing of something as monstrous is appeal, appeal, A-P-E-E-L. People really oh, yeah. need it's to appeal. research that. <laughs> they, need, they need to research that, that you need to know what you're buying. You need to ask your grocers, are, is, are you using appeal? You know, you mentioned an avocado, you know, some of these markets are carrying avocados with the appeal coating on them. Mm -hmm. We have a right to ask our markets, are you carrying appeal produce? Mm -hmm. They have to answer to us. They have to say yes or no. Do you know? And if they don't want to disclose that, you should think about not shopping mm -hmm. there. I won't shop there. If I have to ask my grocer, is there appeal on the apples? Is there an appeal coating on the avocado? They need to be able to provide me with that information. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. For sure. in, and by the way, Yasmina, also with the meat today, mm. we have a right to ask our grocers, where is their meat coming from? You know, it's like saying, is your salmon wild, you know, or is it farm raised? We mm -hmm. have a right to ask our markets. We have a right to ask our restaurants. Where do you get your fish? Yeah, but for it's that, we have people like to have the idea to ask or to wonder or to get informed. It's about getting proper information. Um, for me, it's not even complicated. I just uh, go to farmer's market. Uh, there is also a woman who is selling meat that is frozen, but it's from uh, when I was away two hours away ranch here and all the animals are free in nature right but so when you look for it online you have also and delivery better not very expensive you can go with your yes. 
Yes. Uh, box, you can have a delivery of amazing bison from this farm. I'm sometimes I take some bison with them. The animals are totally free. They have a ritual when they're going to kill the animal. They are really working with the spirit and saging them, saging the guns, saging the place where they're going to cut after. And, and this makes a big difference. So like we're doing the natives, you know, about this gratitude for that. So there are possibilities. And this can bring people together to order because some people will say, oh, 29 bucks for the delivery, it's a lot. But when you are two or three, it's not more than ordering something at, uh, I don't know, some delivery, you know. Where yes. So it's, uh, yeah. it's worth it. There's, there's definitely some, I know there's quite a few of the, these farming services where they do a package uh, crate for you or a box for yeah. you. Yeah. And um, there's, there's many of them. You just have to research it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, voila. So I did not donate, I did not give a lot of details about my diet, but I, I cannot... Uh, like I said, if I want to have a slice of pizza, I go to Damor Pizza in Malibu. It's delicious. And Absolutely. I you know, Yasmina, you, I, I know because I've eaten meals with you. And I think that what we both have in common is that we eat whatever we desire to eat. We don't restrict ourselves to eat something like, oh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. My criteria is that I like it to be natural. Do you know, I'm like you, I don't like processed food. So I think when people ask you, you know, what are you eating? I, and you say not the details, but you say, keep it natural. And if you keep your diet natural, like I said, I started this morning with a fresh papaya. It was so delicious. Um, you know, you keep it natural, you keep it simple, you keep it healthy. And you can have a slice of pizza once on a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Pizza. You and I have had ice cream. We've had chocolate mousse. Yeah. We've had banana bread. Yeah. We've had, we've had everything. I don't think there's, we've had wonderful cheese and a baguette where, you know, I mean, I've had some great meals with you and it's just so delicious. But it's simple to go back to that word. It's simple. It's no, not complicated. I think uh, what, when the main rule is to be to have various food and to be moderate, moderation. Right. If one day you eat too much because you had friends and you enjoy your big dinner and you drink a little bit of wine, a little bit too much, the day after put you in diet. Yes, you could do the intermittent fasting. I happen to like intermittent fasting. For me, if I've eaten, you know, a lot one day, I will really spread it out the next day. Yeah, but this, this is like, now we call this like that, but it's not something new. It's something like, if you listen to your body, uh, me, I really enjoy to have my breakfast brunch at 11 or noon. Me and I Me too. my last meal at six in the evening. Now it's called intermittent fasting, but it's just a way of living. I have the same exact schedule as you do. And I think it's really important to pay attention to how your body is changing mm -hmm. and how you, you know, you asked me about my, my, um, the way I'm eating. I just accepted the fact that I'm changing <laughs> as we all yeah, are. I'm We're changing. Because someone told me, asked me also, how do you deal with the belly fat, hormonal belly fat? Uh, I say, uh -uh. since I'm here, I have some belly fat. <laughs> Not a lot, but I have it because very simple reason, move. I'm not moving here. I'm not going, I hike once on a while, like few kilometers, not a lot. It's too hot or I'm too distracted because I take pictures. So I'm not in an intense hiking thing. Before, when I was in Malibu, almost every day I was walking in the water at least 40 minutes. Right. So sure. Me too. Sure, yeah. I could not put fat on my belly or a lot. I still had a little bit, but now I have. Yeah. I have a little. I, <laughs> you know, I know. Fat on my belly. And what? 
you know i would love to don't have it but i have it yes i I'm know not, i mean i'm not moving but it's not very much it's minor you know it's it's minor i think it's minor, not but something... a lot i'm not used to be like that you know what i mean so it's like ah oh, i have that and uh, it's like it's there when i do yoga I cannot fold the same way because I have this little pillow of fat right <laughs> there where there is room where, you know, I had two pregnancy. I took a lot of kilos, almost 28 kilos for each of them. So it's a lot in pound and there is room. The skin has been really like, and, but it's like that. What are I going to do? I know that uh, if I start again to walk in the water or to swim, this going to be less you know yeah i think walking yesterday i wanted to walk barefoot i was going to walk in my neighborhood and i said you know i want to i want to feel the earth underneath my feet i want to walk on grass so i walked around my backyard like it was a labyrinth and i walked like in a figure eight just around and around over again even if you have a small sure. piece of land around you you can you can literally walk in a pattern in front of you so that you're getting your cardiovascular going and you're getting the exercise. Again, it seems to me that our conversation today is about simplifying, not making things complicated. Do and you know? not the excuse that you cannot do it. Like, no. when, oh, but uh, my knee, I cannot do uh, push-ups. I cannot do that. I cannot do... Do it in another way. Do it differently. There's just always something to do. You can literally take a jump rope. We could take a jump rope. We could we could take a little trampoline. Yeah. We could be a, we we could do floor exercises. We just need the floor. There's so much that we can do that goes a long way. Yeah. It's a floor and our own weight. It's already especially if you have a little bit of belly fat, you have more weight, so you can exercise better. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And today I've been beaten again in my butt about a fire hand. But you know what? This is very interesting. It's one year I'm here. The first time last year when I've been beaten, it lasts two weeks. Two weeks. It was under my butt, under on a tight under my butt. Some days ago, I've been beaten at a, I've been beaten like maybe seven or eight times since I'm here. Uh, one month ago, I'd been bitten at one foot and it has been enormous because the extremity, it's really, it's becoming, you know, the blood flow and all that, it's becoming swollen. Yeah. It lasts maybe one week. Uh, some days ago, I'd been bitten on the other foot, same place. It lasts three days. And now this morning i've been bitten in the butt almost in between in between my two butt parts i was you mean like, you're, uh, you're, it's called your cheeks yasmina oh, your cheeks you. i don't know how you call this <laughs> so just almost in between at a little bit in between my cheeks you know i'm telling you it seems great i put gaia told me oh you know i saw you can put this charcoal with essential oil so I did for the foot, it works, it helps. I did for the butt, and it seems to help, but I think also my body now gets used to. Probably if this is the third time <laughs> you've been bit, you know, I think your body's like, oh, what's another bite? <laughs> and maybe I, I go beyond and I say, I embrace it as well, because I say, okay, there are no things coming by chance. The universe is very well organized. Maybe this stimulates certain point of acupuncture. So I have acupuncture, you know, session like the moxa or something like that. <laughs> and maybe my body is very happy to have formic acid doses, like, you know, overdose regularly of formic acid. So now I'm surprised because I remember the first time it was like that enormous red fire for two weeks. And now, it's like well, your body, I think your body creates that. This is called natural yes, immunity. It's bad. When you're exposed to something, you build up the antibodies. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, we would be talking for another hour if we talked about that because our, nat our natural immunity is so miraculous. 
yeah. we have the ability to heal ourselves. Once something is introduced to us, we build our natural antibodies against it. Mm -hmm. You know, we that if the body has a natural stasis. So, you know, all this nonsense about putting all this crap into our bodies, mm -hmm. you know, like we need to constantly be putting poisons in our bodies to build up but, immunity, but you know, that's crazy. Or, uh, we spoke about this a lot. It's because of that that a lot of people are sick in this country. Well, I I think they need to look at how much are they putting in their bodies? What kind of toxins are they putting in their Baby. bodies? How, how, how many, you know, do you not trust your body? Do you not trust your immunity system? Do you not trust your own natural immunity that you're going to be brainwashed to think that you have to put, you know, the kids today, I know we're going to stay on here another hour if we keep talking about this, but kids today, their vaccine schedule has 72 shots, I know. maybe more by now. I know. This is insanity, okay? When, when we were little, we probably had, I don't know, maybe six shots. Mm -hmm. Every year they keep introducing new shots, new shots, new shots, without any respect for the natural immunity that we have. I mean, you know, people wake up yeah. to this. The body, you know? the body cannot, cannot work properly. Before you put one more, you know, genetic sequencing, mm. you know, bioweapon in your body, maybe you should really think about your body's own natural immunity. You know, look at the way these um, people in positions of so-called authority try and make you be convinced that you're weak, mm. that, you're, that you don't have any natural immunity. I mean, look at what we went through over the last few years, this constant propaganda that like, you're gonna die. If you don't take this shot, you're going to kill grandma. Yeah. You know, it's like what kind of brainwashing? And by the way, they're going to try and do it again and oh, again sure. and again. So I know more people are waking up now than ever before because they're on to the game. This is just one big, you know, brainwashing game that's being done to us. And I think we've had enough. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and also, I don't want to be negative, but since generations now here in this country uh since babies it has been all these injections so now there is a kind of pattern where the bodies from generation to generation are unable uh, because there are the frequencies of this injection and thing that are at work in the bodies and i think that it's very difficult for people to to get back their imu natural immune system well and well, look at the, look at all these look at a lot of people and again i don't want to do a whole thing on your instagram live that will make us come off like oh we're anti this and we're anti no. that i'm not anti i'm not anti anything you know what i am i'm pro life and yeah. I'm pro health. It's, That's what I am. Okay. So starting to call people these things like you're anti this and you're anti that. No, we're not anti anything. We're pro truth, pro health, and pro life. That's what we That's, are. That's Meaning be, be somebody who really values the, the naturalness of life. Just common sense. We are, as what I say always, we are organic beings. Why we don't we put an organic synthetic things in an organic body. It's not compatible. It can create only troubles. It's I not know. possible. Yeah, Yasmina, and I, I know we're saying this really out of love and compassion. And I, I know you're, you're my dear friend. And I know that when we speak this way, we're really trying to have people understand that we're saying this because we want to appeal to them to, to, for them to recognize how powerful they really are naturally yeah and not to be so quick to listen to what is being told to them please trust your intuition please listen to your inner guidance it'll tell you what is true don't let other people even if they're in a position of authority to tell you to do something against your will you know without informed consent you need to be able to see things and decide, is this right for me or not? Yeah. Make those decisions for yourself. And, and people, don't tell, don't let anybody make those decisions for you. People know very well. I have this young woman who is pregnant now. She's in a Middle Eastern country and she contacted me and she said, 
I'm pregnant eight weeks and um, what do you think? What, what do, do you have some advices? Because I have the strong feeling that it's too medicalized. I say you already have your answer. You already say it. You feel it that it's too much. So don't reject, yes. but do what you feel to do. Yes, listen to your own inner voice, your own inner guidance. It will guide us to where exactly we need to be. Yeah. We just came out of three years of being told what to do every single day. Don't you think we've had enough of it? Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Don't comply. I, Don't, I comply. Don't comply. Do comply. Do not comply. And for those of you that are wanted, you know, unfollow us or not to listen to this it's your prerogative what you want to do if you want to get 20 more boosters go for it yeah. do whatever you think is your truth but i have to tell you something please listen to your truth listen to your own intelligence we have an innate intelligence in our being that is trying to tell us how to live this life mm -hmm. how to stay natural how to stay healthy how to be aligned with truth, how to be aligned with divine presence. We're getting all of the signs and the signals. What more do we need to see? You yeah. know, I mean, aren't, didn't we learn something for, from the last three years? Yasmina, you and I have talked about it so much. What have we learned from the last three years? Do we want to do that all over again? I don't think so. People are waking up in droves. People are saying enough. Mm -hmm. We've had enough. Oh, We're done. Yeah. It's great. Me, I'm like observing all that and I say, wow, I could never imagine we would have to go through this collectively to be able to really make a big change in the way humanity is, is functioning. And it's fabulous to observe, you know, it's like, wow, it's mind blowing. I'm it really is mind blowing. It is mind blowing. Huh. And the best we can hope for, Yasmina, is that people wake up. Yeah, I, I think it's, as I said always, all these situations, it's really the necessary condition for that. Uh, it's for that I'm not in fear at all. I'm not worried at all. I, it's words that I not, they are not in my vocabulary. I, I just observe. It's what I say to people, step back and observe. Stay in yes. state, observe, connect the thing. Uh, be with yourself. Yeah. Um, observe, 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 connect the dots and ask questions. Yeah. Never yeah. stop asking questions. You have a right to ask questions. Is this the truth? Is this good for me? Is this healthy? Am I being misled? Am I trusting someone else to make decisions for me? You know, ask questions. But you already, when you, but I said to this young uh, woman, when you already, her answer was already in the question she was asking. Your, your answer is already there. If you yes. ask a question, it's because uh, there is something that is alerting you there. Exactly. So yes. The answer is in the question. So it just, yes. because if you ask it, it's because you wonder and you know something is up. That's right. Because right. if you don't ask, and if you just you ask somebody what is what is you know even if they close their eyes and they have like a little meditation and they go inside and say what is my truth what am I hearing deep inside my heart and soul and you're right we have the answers within and if we ask somebody why aren't you trusting that they will say they're either afraid to they're listening to other people tell them what to do. And I think the best advice we can give to anyone is just listen to your inner truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's already sunset now. It's no light. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So another beautiful day, another day to connect. It's always so wonderful to talk to you. Yes, yes meet okay. and I. We talk about everything under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a heat wave this week. We're going to be yes. hot. Yeah. 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 Well, stay cool, Yasmina. Yeah, you too. You know? Yes, I will.
Much love to you. Bye -bye. And I will speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
All of you. <laughs> okay, Yasmina, lots of love to you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
that often I'm not really aware about what I bring as good thing to people, but also of the ones that are opening their intimacy to me, that are speaking to me about concern that are really intimate and ask me how I would I would go through this, what I would do. And so I thank you very much for your trust and to be like so, uh, so kind to sh share with me what is dear to you. Uh, it's really moving me a lot. So thank you for all, all of this and all of you. And I wish you a very good night or a very good day. And uh, next time, I will try to do it in French. I'm sorry for the French people, but the audience is mostly uh, speaking English. So it's like, for example, this young woman in the Middle East or uh, other people all around the world. So it's much uh, easier to, to do that. <laughs> Thank you.